So today's video is going to be very, very different from what I usually release. This video is actually going to be some kind of combination between a reaction video and a teachable moment teaching video. What we're going to do is we are going to listen to recordings that were leaked about a year ago of Johnny Depp and Amber Heard argument that incur occurs between them. And the reason why I really want to examine this with you is because it provides such perfect examples of so many of the things that we talk about on this channel. It shows us perfect examples of attachment style, fair fighting rule, and especially of manipulation tactics. Now, before we start the audio, I will tell you, this is a little difficult to hear. There are some points in here where it really escalates pretty uncomfortable level and a lot of F words, so prepare yourself. This is definitely not the video you want to listen to when you have kids in the car. Here we go. You gotta change how we do things, and I don't want to trust you, and I feel like all the trust is gone. All the fucking trust is gone in the relationship because you keep splitting. I, we there, fight together, no but you're the only one who splits, and I, I want that back. There's no trust, there's nothing. Then maybe there's nothing to talk about. Since this argument sort of starts out with this trust factor, I think it's important to look at the context of the situation, to take a look at how Amber Heard and Johnny Depp got together in the first place. So they met on the set of a movie and started dating somewhere around 2011 and 2012. At the time, he was with a long-term partner that he had two children with, but that relationship came to an end. The rumors kind of seemed to say that Johnny Depp and Amber Heard started dating before then. I think she had a relationship that also ended and officially they were dating in 2012, married in 2015. Now, why is all that important for us to know? It's because this relationship was started on a very unsteady foundation. If both of them were in relationships with someone else and they both were sort of cheating and fell in love with each other, then you've got to imagine that this relationship is starting out with so much insecurity. I've actually dealt some with couples whose relationships started, like they started seeing each other while um, they were cheating on someone else. And it seems that these relationships are just plagued with insecurity for reasons that you might imagine. But I did come over here with enough love in my heart and sincerity. All the things I said, which now I feel like, even though you fucking split and come home, you know, I still, I still did that. I fucking have showed myself. I've proven myself. I've fought for you. I've showed up. I'm not going to be in a physical fucking altercation don't. with you. Then don't. You fucking hit me last night. You fucking... What about all the other time? Hey, come on, you cannot act like that. It's about that. It's well, not... we're on a plane. I can't split. No, and you hit back. So don't act like you don't fucking participate. I pushed you. I'm not going to get into the details of that fight. You and I both... Okay, so let's stop right there. There's an argument about two things happening really at the same time, right? On Amber's side, she's really frustrated because she keeps saying, you always split. You never fight for this relationship, essentially is what she's saying. And that really is the theme of her side of the story. You're going to hear that throughout this conversation. And his side of the theme you're going to hear is, but you get violent with me. And so you can hear that they start this conversation about, well, you get violent. And then she's like, yeah, but don't act like you don't participate. And he's like, okay, yeah, but it was just that one time when I could get away from you on the airplane. And when he sort of calls her out and sort of backs her into a corner with this piece of information, she shifts the subject to, I'm not going to get into the details with you, which is a shifting distraction manipulation tactic of changing the subject basically or saying, hey, we're not going to go down that road because it only lead to further fight. Now, I do think that it is okay to not discuss something that you know is going to make things more angry. That's probably a smart move. But honestly, in this situation, it feels more like a deflection tactic. Kind of like I'm cornered up. You got me. But I'm going to use this to deflect. You know that you split when there is no physical violence and that you do it and meet like at the very beginning of fights these days and if you split and you go into a different room and you don't actually leave that house it does nothing but perpetuate the fight and you so you can hear in this little section amber is really frustrated like i said her main frustration is that he always leaves the fight and you hear her say and these days you leave it right at the very beginning and she's mad about that what i hear when i hear that is 
that there's been so many of these that have escalated that as soon as things start to get tense, he's like, okay, I need to bail. I need to get out of here because this is going to escalate. And and it sounds like sometimes he just tries to leave the room. But even then she's saying, you're bailing on this conversation. You don't actually do it respectfully. You don't do it in a way that actually means we won't fight. It always makes more fights. It always makes them longer. It never, ever makes you calmer. You never come out going, I want to talk or I'm okay or it's going to be okay. And I am a hundred, I'm sick and tired a hundred percent of being the only one that goes and fights for it. You know what that does? It demoralizes the, the half of this relationship that is me. It demeans me, demoralizes me. Yes, really. Okay. So in this little section, she's saying you never even do it respectfully and it never makes things calmer anyway and you never come out and say okay let's talk about it so again she's frustrated because she wants him to sort of come back into the conversation when there are arguments and fights but I'm guessing that he probably doesn't do that for a couple of reasons. One, because he has a substance abuse problem and he's using substances to numb. Hang on there. We're going to get into more about that. But two, because he knows that it is just going to be a bigger argument because she's so angry. I'm sure that he does avoid coming back and trying to have the conversation um, because obviously there's a history of escalation and it doesn't end well. Really, when you split on me, how do you feel when I leave you? When I split, I when I go into before. the other room, you said. You leave how you get another room, you get a flight, when, things like that. And you when, asked me not to in it? Australia, and ever since. No, how then, many? I how many? How many? I don't know. Left. I have to count them up. No, because I haven't left you house maybe twice last last night. No, you've done it before. I've come here before. I'm not doing that anymore. Yeah, you've come here before, last time and another time, and then last time. You've done this several times, and and so getting me rooms. a room. I mean, getting another room in a hotel is just the same thing. When did I get another room in a hotel? You uh, text Stephen or, or Nathan in Toronto to get you another room. It's chronic. It happens all the time. And if you do it to go into another room, you do it and you get dressed. You were fucking screaming. I'm not going to validate my actions last night. I feel very bad. No, I'm talking in you. Toronto. I, I did not start screaming until you had fucking said all this shit. You poke an animal enough, it is eventually, it doesn't matter how friendly it is, That's how not cool. True. Well, I it's the same for me. So it's the same and for you me. Kicked and kicked so bad. I have not done this to you. I have not said these things. Yeah. I have not started the... Okay, so while you listen to this recording, it's pretty hard not to see Amber Heard as the attacker here. But I do want to point out that we don't have all of the context. You see here, she's saying if you poke a beast too many times, they're going to lose it. So we don't know what happened exactly in the argument the night before. You can kind of gather from this recording that whatever happened, it escalated. He tried to leave. She's mad and that she gets physically violent. But you don't know what prompted the argument to begin with. I'm not saying it doesn't matter what he said that doesn't warrant um, getting violent or super mean and aggressive. I get that. But just keep in mind that context is always important and we don't know the whole story. Fight by saying I'm going to get in another room. And I'm not going to sit here and fight about fucking Toronto anymore. Guess what? I let it go. I'm not fucking about, I'm not fucking talking about Toronto. I can make the tapes. I can whisper it. I can write it. Guess what? I'm not saying another fucking word about Toronto. I'm so sick and tired of fucking fighting about old fights. This is not about a fight. This is broad. This is a broad well, now that's one insightful thing that gets said in this argument. I'm sick and tired of fighting about old fights. This fight is only about other fights. So they're fighting about who's who fights wrong, like who does the wrong thing during the fight. And if I'm telling you every single time you get dressed and you fucking split the top of a fight, you never fucking try and work it out. You never fight for me. You never come to me. You never self-calm. You never self-suit. You're never the one to throw the olive branch. I'm sick and tired of it. It needs to fucking change. And you can go, I can't meet those demands. I can't do it. Or you can fucking promise me so I have a modicum of safety. I feel a modicum of respect. A little tiny shit sliver of fucking like, you are in this whether it is good or bad. Down and up. Lows and highs. Tough and easy. Not just when it's easy. I feel like you're a fucking vacation husband. You were, were oh, so there when it's good. You're so there when it's easy. Second, it gets hard. Question it. Last night, I'm just as guilty. I give you that. But I have been primed and conditioned. At this point, I couldn't, I thought I'd never get over Toronto. It hurts. Okay, so to me, when I, the whole, if I just listen and sum up this whole recording in one lesson or thing to learn or take away from this is the thing that I hear is what screams at me is that there is an insecure attachment style happening here with Amber Heard. Now, 
it's really hard not to say obviously i can't say because you i'm um, just as one recording but these are things that you would probably hear and see in arguments when you are dealing with someone who has an insecure attachment style because there's this fear of losing the relationship sometimes if you have this attachment style you're so scared of losing your relationship that you can squeeze it too hard sometimes you try to pull away or push a person away but you really don't want them to go away you're really trying to get them to come chase you and what i hear from this is i want you to to fight for me Johnny and she's provoking him which truly is just pushing him away when what she wants more than anything obviously is for him to come closer obviously the way she's going about this is pretty ineffective and toxic but I need for you to also keep in mind that there's during this whole time Johnny Depp has a pretty major substance abuse problem in fact there's a part in this recording where you're going to hear it and eventually where she goes and gets him a Xanax and brings it back and then something else too I think so clearly he if he's taking a bunch of Xanax and these sleeping pills and these other things, he is somewhat disconnected and distant. And so that's probably um, continuing to trigger her attachment style. She's coming at him aggressively, which is then pushing him further away. So bad. I got fucked over so bad and I did not do anything like that. I didn't soup that level at all. Got the tapes. Let me hear them. Absolutely. I wish, oh, I wish it had caught everything too. Why don't you send me the, send me the fucking recording? Just, I will. Just text me. Um, I don't know how else to say I will. Hasn't really been a kind of safe environment now, has it? So if I'm a little joke of fire, yeah, okay. I haven't because we have not been well. We have not been good. When I fucking move out, if I move out, then you I'll have, you'll have them and you can fucking relish them. You won't fucking like it, what you hear. So when I hear this, it's like, well, he's like, well, just send me the tapes. And she's sort of setting it up. Well, not everything's on there. I wish it was. And then and it's like, well, I couldn't give them to you because we're not doing well these days. And there's just all these excuses and reasons where she's sort of diverting the fact where he's sort of pinning her in on either like, I want this or this happened or that happened. And you can see when there happens this scramble or this tap dance to confuse the situation, to redirect the conversation, to somehow throw it back on him. Won't make you happy, but you'll hear what I'm telling you. We haven't really been good. It hasn't really been a safe environment now, has it? You act like you're fucking on something when I haven't sent you this like well send them to me get this it hasn't been good it's been a little tough well, it wasn't before real was it tough i mean it was only in the sense that you tried to keep me you know it's been really tough. And why did you come to real all i've been trying to do is be with you spend time with you you said you needed that you said that it made a difference when i wasn't working you wanted me to travel with you. that was the time you were looking for apartments that was after Toronto. Yeah, that, that's when we came back here. I know where Toronto, we were. Toronto, Boston, here. Reverse. I know where we were. We've been on the road basically since Australia, and I have been at your side, and I have not been filming with you. Well, we were on our honeymoon. I hope you were at my side. I'm not talking about just a honeymoon now, am I? I'm talking about many months. And was it all the honeymoon? No. I have been at your side throughout it all. You said, why did you come to Rio? And I answered, I would love for it to be better. I have no fucking consistency, no safety, no security. The relationship is something me, is something you don't fight for, don't stand up for, you always run from when it's tough. I, I'm telling you, I need more, I need, we didn't say vows, you didn't make them exactly in the same, in that, in that way, but now is a fucking time. I need to know if you're gonna be there. I want promises, I told you that at the beginning of this conversation. I need promises that you're gonna fucking be there. I need promises that this is important to you, not when it's easy, what is hard too? Is this is something you'll fight for. See, what's happening right here is there's sort of this double edged sort of, I need you to say that you're in this no matter what. Essentially, it's no matter what, even if it's violent, even if I'm aggressive, even if it's toxic. And so it's this. I'm only getting this wound up because you're not in it. But my guess is, I mean, he doesn't say this, but my guess is, is that part of the reason why he's not fully in it is because it's so toxic. So it's, it's like this feedback loop where one thing keeps pinging on the other thing back and forth, back and forth. This is something that's sacred that neither of us throw out every fight. I can't be the only one to hold the promises. I was in Toronto and it fucked me over. I can't be the only one. You can't be the only one. If I split on you, all those times that I thought about doing it would not be here. And I stayed and it's tougher. You know, that's stronger. I'm stronger. It is easy to run. It is easy to run away from problems. It is easy to take that out and say, well, that's the easiest. That, I mean, that's the best, safest. That's the safest way out. I'm not saying we should get in physical altercations. I never want to be in. But every time you don't like what I say and you fucking run away, 
will never work out anything. You can't run away every fight. You can't. It's easy. It's it, it's not brave. It's not strong. It's harder to say to somebody, I want to work this out. I want to face what I have. I want to face what you have. I want to work it out with you. You're not working it out. You're running away. And then you make me be the bigger person every single time and come to you and knock on the door and come to this house and say, hey, we're married. It's supposed to be sacred. Come I down. Calm you. down. I made you. Yes, by default, if you're never the one to do it, one of us is, and I'm the one to do it every time. It means I'm the bigger person every time. It means I have to be the strong one. It means every time I have to fight for our relationship. And you get to be not, you get to be lazy. You get to be cowardly. I don't know what it is. What are you here for? What do you need me for? Once again, I am fighting for the relationship. With a guy that you don't fucking trust or like? Why? I did not say I love you. You're my favorite person in the world. I don't see how I Remember what I said at the beginning? I'm sorry you feel like you can't imagine it. But I said this to you at the beginning of this conversation. I said, you're my favorite person in the whole world. If you weren't the most magnetic, shiny, beautiful, interesting, dynamic person I had ever met in my life, it would be so easy to walk away from this bratty thing that you do. Untrustworthy. Did you hear what I just said? I said I can't trust... I can't trust. That's not meaning you're untrustworthy. It means we've created a situation. And I'm telling you what you do to create it too. We've created a situation in which there it, there cannot, trust can't grow. It's like, it's trampled every single time and we need a marriage. That's why I sat down. Do you not remember me sitting down at the very beginning of this conversation and saying just that to you? Say, I know you got married for security and for safety. So did I. We did not get married because it was something that we're doing, you know, for because it was something we could walk away. We wanted to stick the foundation. No? I want, yes. I wanted to make you my wife. I yes, wanted. yes. But you could just have me as your girlfriend if you didn't want the foundation. And you told me, and maybe you go back on it now. Fine. Okay, cool. Lie about that. I don't know. You told me you wanted a foundation. You told me you wanted the security. You wanted the safety. You liked the foundation. At the beginning, you said, I really like having that. It feels safe. So oh, don't argue well, with me when I say it now. I'm not arguing with you. Oh, yeah. By saying because I loved you and you're my wife, I wanted you to be my wife. That's picking it apart? No. And how did I pick it apart? See, this to me is a great example of gaslighting. And you're going to hear as this argument goes on, it's she sort of deflecting the conversation. Every time he has a point, she pulls out a word or she picks out this phrase and she starts to sort of go down that rabbit hole. And that then deflects from the main point that's being made. Now, I'm trying to be really fair and be both sides on this, but I will say clearly this woman is sending messages very strongly that I just want you to say you love me and you're in this. And he's not saying that, right? He's saying everything but that. So she's escalating, escalating, which is out of bounds, but he's definitely not um, bringing anything in. He's just being sort of very passive and um, letting her wind herself up into the bad guy role. I want to fight about fight. I want to fight about the semantics. How come when I come up with a point, you can't answer it? You don't want, or suddenly you don't want to answer it. What am I not answering? Because I don't want to fight about this new thing. No, I don't want to. I I said you wanted the safety and security and you stopped me, you interrupted me, and then you said, what? Because I, no, because I wanted to have you as my I didn't interrupt you. You asked me, right? You said, right? I meant you interjected. I meant you said. You said. How about that? See, now, is this better? I answered you. I addressed what you're saying. Now, can we please not fight about that? And I said, because I love you. I said loved. We're talking about a fucking event this past sense. If I used loved, I, my apologies. It doesn't mean you don't love me. My whole point that you had, I don't know, an issue with is that you love me. Yes, you marry me, though, because you wanted to take some safety, some security, some stability, a foundation. So even though there was this sort of picking this little nitpicking, this further argument about love or love, when he goes back and clarifies that and say, OK, whether or not I said love or love, it doesn't mean I don't love you now. I'm just saying I loved you then. That's why I got married. And you can see that even just him saying that her tone drops down pretty considerably. Now it's not going to stay down, but you can see when he's telling her a little bit of that, she is de-escalating. If you take issue with that, okay. Take issue with it. But if you agree, then when you agree, that's who you were when you married me. Yes, but the only thing that's missing is with you. Mm -hmm. I wanted those things with you. Yes. And that's what I was trying to say. And, And I wanted to marry you for that. For our love, for the security, for the foundation, for yes, of course. But you left 
for you. I'm sorry, I didn't. I mean, with you, of course. With you. Uh, I mean that. Of course. Of course I do. Of course I want that with you. It's why I married you. But I need the safety. I need the security. I need the boundaries. And I think you... Could you not agree? I need the same things. Okay. Look how much more vulnerable she's coming at this conversation when he is expressing some kind of love and care and concern. So you can clearly see that this is really what she wants. She just wants him to say it. She just wants to feel that he's in the relationship. Now, if you're listening to this, you may have um, experienced this yourself. I think we've all experienced this ourselves. You know, we feel someone pulling away. We want to fight for the relationship. But when that happens, when you go at them, it's only going to push them further and further away. And so it's just her strategy for trying to get him to fight is not the best strategy, obviously. So I when you start flipping out and I can't get a word in and it's, you know, manic and angry what the fuck amber i get angry i get i'm human this is the kind of situation where one okay, gets well, angry okay but you can't provoke anger in me then just you can't try. control it. okay so you can see the situation was de-escalating she was calming down you could feel that they were both sort of bringing it down connecting a little bit and then he's like but you can't get angry so then he brings back in the fight so he now now he's not being angry aggressive about it but he's reintroducing the fight and immediately you can hear that tone start to go back up so here we go again but just I'm try. angry just try let's both try there's anger there's something fucking really, really fucking poking us in the ass. Try, try not to fucking fight. Try to address it without jumping down each other's throats because all that's going to do is build a mountain of fucking, some species of fucking hatred within the love and, and, uh, uh. Now, right here, I'd like to inject just a little piece of my own personal advice. You know, a lot of people say things like, don't go to bed angry. Well, I completely disagree with that. My saying is, always go to bed angry because all that's going to happen if you try to discuss something when you're angry or upset is you're just going to say a bunch of mean things that you're going to regret and your thinking brain isn't even functioning good enough at that point to really either get your point across or to hear the other person's point of view so it is a bad idea to discuss things when you're angry now i know some of us feel like okay there's a problem out there and i really want to solve it right now but i'm telling you it is a bad idea now on the other end of that there are some people that just want to avoid having any kind of difficult conversation no matter what and they want to sort of run away from the conversation i'm not really saying do that i'm just saying don't discuss it in the heat of the moment so a good thing to do when things are escalating is to say something you know what this is a really important topic definitely needs to be discussed i need to get my thoughts together about that let's talk about it tomorrow after dinner or something like that you can sort of set a time to talk about it which gets sort of both needs met it gives you some time to get away and process and think and also um doesn't just leave the problem out there hanging totally fucking mistrust because you say you don't trust me you don't trust me i get it okay i'm flake i'm with this i'm with that I didn't right. say as a person, I, I don't trust the marriage, I don't trust you, I don't feel safe with it because you always fucking bail on it. Well, then That's I, I don't know, you know. I, I want know. the trust back. I don't, you can deflect all you want, say it's my fault, say how dare I get angry at you ever, whatever. I'm telling you. So there's something, you know, really important here. And he, she, she's saying, I'm telling you, like, I need you to fight. And he's saying, no, I'm telling you, I need you to not be so escalated. But she's going to defend her being escalated instead of just saying, you know what? I get, it gets too out of control. We can do better. She's going to continue to defend her escalation, pretty much saying, like, my feeling uh, I'm trying to fight for us. She's sort of justifying that behavior. And because it's my feeling, I can't help it. It's who I am too bad. And it really, what it means is actually a good thing about me because it means I'm the one fighting for us. Cause you don't like that shit in your marriage. I don't like guff that you, that you uh, put on me in our marriage. 
and if it causes distrust in me, it causes distrust in me. I, yeah, I don't and know. And I don't, and I don't know. know. I don't know what. The sometimes thing is. I don't. I don't want to fucking be there and go through the shit. I don't, man. I don't want to because I don't want to fucking fight. But it doesn't have to be one. It's not like I'm saying, hey, choose fight. You just said I get mad. I'm gonna scream. I didn't say. Uh, you can see right there, he sort of got her cornered up again, and now we start to see in the little tap dance of getting out of it. Now, just before that, you heard some truth, right? Um, he's saying, you know what? Sometimes when these things happen, I don't trust you. And sometimes I do want to just run away from this thing. And that was honesty and truth. And even though that's not what she wants to hear, she, you can tell, at least initially, she hears that in some kind of calmness because she knows that there's truth in that. Always the case. I said, yeah, I'm mad. It, happen it happens. Yes, I know. It happens often. That are wrong, are repeating themselves, and they happen often. If you think I'm some fucking tyrant or bully, then don't fucking be with me. But don't sit here and insult me like I'm the fuck up because I have the You're audacity. You're the one to get saying me. that I'm the tyrant and the bully and the and at the same time the the, the, the guy that runs bully. away and you the are you run away every single. Day. Okay, so I mean, then what are you? Then I'm not doing lying with me? about it. Then what are you doing with me? I already answered that. I already said that we went through this conversation literally five minutes ago. I answered this already five minutes ago. You just said to me that I shouldn't be with you. No, I said if That's you. I no, I said if I'm some, you know, harping bully, which is what you make me sound like. Like I'm like constantly on you, making you feel bad. That's because that's what I do. And then you ignore everything. You take me for granted. You're ignoring everything that I do for you. You make me sound terrible. You talk about me in a terrible way. You. Uh, you do not fight for me, and then you want to sit here and make me sound so terrible mean, to be around. You, you don't. I, everything I've already explained. No. Ten fight, minutes. Before. No fight for you. I don't understand. Is you never mean? ever do the work. Put in the work. If we're arguing about something, you don't ever try to get to the bottom of it. Figure out. Make you want to make it easy on you. So you split. Okay. So right here we have some definite what um, in counseling we would call cognitive distortion. First thing that I hear that stands out to me is she's saying never. Ever. Well, first of all, anytime you're saying always or never, you probably aren't being exactly accurate. And so not only is that sort of an out of bounds thing to do, because I'm sure it's not he always does that. Maybe he does that frequently or regularly, but probably not always. So not only is it an unfair thing to put on the other person, but also when you're saying that, especially when you're saying it out loud, you're reinforcing it to yourself, thereby only making yourself more and more frustrated and angry. And not only is she saying, you never do this, escalating herself, but then she's doing another cognitive problem called, we call that mind reading. It's because you just want the easy road, right? So not only am I saying you always do this, but I know why you always do this and here's why. Both of those are pretty unhealthy ways of thinking that are just going to keep you yourself escalated and frustrated. Fight for me. You don't fight when there's a problem. You don't come to me. You don't uh, uh, make peace with me. You never extend an olive branch. You're never the bigger guy. You're never the one that's like, okay, I'm going to put my own feelings aside for a second and say, this is bigger than us. Let's stop fighting. You never are the one to come and knock on my door. You take me for granted. It's not true. Not true. I'm not the one who fucking throws fucking pots and that's diff whatever that's the different. fucking else at me. That's different. That's okay. When she's like, you never did this, you never did that. And he said, that's not true. She actually stopped talking. Did you hear that little pause there? You know what I think? Right there in that moment, she thought, she was she thought maybe he's gonna say something about his affection for me his feeling for me um and she kind of waited for it but it didn't come what came is but you throw pots and pans so yes she's very aggressive and every time he says something that kind of gets her de-escalated it's almost like then he sort of throws in another little wrench but you keep doing that so it's like and now she's gonna escalate back up that's what one does not <laughs> negate the other it's irrelevant. It's a complete non sequitur. Just because I've thrown pots and pans does not mean that you Vases. come and knock on the door. Just because there are vases does not mean that you come and knock on the door. Really? I should just let you throw. I'm not saying that. You're saying that. You're putting words in my mouth and then making no, non sequitur. I'm giving you a situation. So she's saying just because I do this doesn't mean you shouldn't come back after the fight and say, let's make up. Basically, that's what she's saying. And he's saying, so you think even though you do this, I should do that? And she's like, no, that's not what I'm saying. That is exactly what she just said so again we get into this round and round and round of sort of now i want you to stop and think for a second if these roles were reversed 
And the man in the relationship had been really aggressive, thrown things, hit, done all of these things. Um, and then he was saying, you know, but that makes you cowardly to leave. You don't fight for this relationship. I want you to think about if it was the man saying what she's saying to the woman, the whole picture would look different, wouldn't it? Can you imagine? It's like, you know, I can't believe you left. You're so weak. You should stand there when I'm throwing things at you. You know, women have this idea. Some women have an idea in their head that like it's OK for them to do that because they're upset. And it's kind of like, well, I'm not really going to hurt you anyway, but it's unfair. It's particularly unfair for uh, men because, yes, it can they can get hurt, too, but they don't have any ability to sort of protect themselves back. So like, let's say if it was reverse and it was a guy who had a girl and she hit him back. Right. You would say, heck, yeah, she hit him back. You needed or whatever. But if a girl hits a guy and then he hits her back, that's a whole different story. So when a guy's in a physically abusive situation, it's just really a precarious situation because he definitely can't defend himself in that situation. So really the best thing to do is to leave the situation because when someone's that upset that they're throwing things, being aggressive, they're not going to be reasonable. And I think a lot of men are afraid if I don't get out of here, I am going to react to her. and I'm going to do something that I regret. No, you're trying to justify how you don't or do come to the door. No, based I'm on whether justify I throw it. It's irrelevant. No, I'm justifying how you, you, you seem to think that there's this cowardice in me that runs away and I don't fight for you. And you're justifying that by saying I throw pots and pans. OK, cool. Let's no, talk about everything you do. wrong. I'm not the one who fucking did that. I don't fucking I didn't. So that makes so that makes sense. So that I. That's no. clear. Yeah. Do I do I, the only time I ever threw anything at you was when you fucking are you, threw the cans at me in Australia. Why are you trying to justify who throws things based because on whether that, or not you come knocking on the door? I don't because get that why is a fucking irrational and violent fucking maneuver. How so a man would want to get out of that area so that he doesn't get so fucking angry that he actually does pop the fucking wife. How does one inform the other? Oh, man. Go home and listen to the tape. Please. That's what they're for. Yes. You listen to the fucking tape. Oh, I'm gonna. So will I. I'm not gonna sit here and promise you I'll never get mad at you or that you'll never fuck up. I know you want to live in a land, in a world where everyone just says yes to you and doesn't question you or criticize you ever. Don't ever. insult me like that, please. But that's not the case. That's not why you're with me. I am honest with you. I'm sorry. You don't want to be held accountable. I get it. I'm not sure you're so honest with me. Well, that's your... Watching you live in front of Travis yeah, last night. You're, really that's expected. your problem, and that's your whole thing that you created. That's my problem, but my problem is that you don't trust me. No, what I don't the trust fuck you in this. is going on in there, man? I don't trust you in this, and I want the trust back. You don't trust me in our marriage. Can you not just feel that this couple is so used to arguing like they don't even know what to say or what to do when they're not arguing and if the argument starts to um, deflate a little bit one of them says something that ignites it back up and the a big thing that you're hearing here is neither person will concede anything to the other person she won't concede at all that she's aggressive and violent and coming on too strong and that's what's running him off and he won't concede at all that he is um, disengaging from the relationship and not sort of coming towards her and uh, nurturing the relationship in the way she wants and i'm sure that they're both right in some degree but neither one will concede anything they're both just so focused on getting the other trying to force the other person to see their point of view now if you are in a situation like this we've all been in a situation like this and you want to feel heard there are ways to get yourself heard that are so much more effective in fact i have a video about it i'll put it right up here in the card so you can watch it if you want to but definitely listen to the rest of this one and then go back and listen to that one it'll give you a much better way to go about having conversations like this well what is everything we're talking about our marriage tell me if you want to stop talking you're saying you don't trust me personally me you or you don't me trust me in the marriage what i don't understand which is what's so different tell me the difference please I think I have the last few hours now. Uh, no, I think you could probably explain it to me a little better. I'm, about to, I'm you wanna, slow. You want to keep being an asshole? Do I want to keep being an asshole? Stop the attitude. It's a redundant question. Stop the attitude. 
It's actually sound together. Okay, sure, no problem. Stop. No problem. So I'm not gonna sit here and go over every fight we've had. I'm not gonna refight this fight. You have something you're holding on to about Travis. Fucking go, fucking go fuck. You know, go do it. Go run away together. I don't know what you're fucking holding on to, but you have created that. I have no part of that. I don't know what you're fucking latched onto in your brain, what stray hairs have fucking commingled and tangled in your brain to make you think you've really figured some sort of thing out, but this is not unusual for you. It's like almost every fight I can pretty much guarantee you find something that you can like let's, let's ask Travis tonight. If you yes, why don't we invite Travis into our, our, our into our fucked up, broken ass three fucking wheeled truck of a marriage why don't we crash it straight into the wall? Because no one knows us better than fucking Travis. You're just afraid that the truth will come out. What truth? You lie. What are you fucking talking about? I didn't fucking even have a, a fucking thing to lie about. What are you fucking talking about? Every fucking fight, there's a new thing that you've convinced yourself no, is a lie. I said to you, You're Amber, right. tell Travis what you just did. Did you just fucking, <laughs> did you punch me in the fucking jaw? Did you fucking kick me? Did you? Uh -huh. Did you? And you wouldn't say a fucking reason. I don't know what oh, you're talking so about. Lied. Never fucking. I see the Never lie. fucking happened. I see the lie. You really should run with this. In fact, maybe you and Travis can like go and like, you know, do a tell all about what a hey, what, you stop. know an investigative stop study. Stop with the attitude, right? Sorry. Stop with the attitude. Sorry. You're getting all bunched up. Sorry. I don't. It's so fucking pointless, and you know it to say here and fight about fucking. Whatever you think happened with Trout, you just... What no. was my conversation? Listen, we I was not lying. lie. I'm not going you to... You lied, you're asshole. You're fucking full of shit. What lied, lie? When? Hmm? What conversation did I have with Travis? I have a big, big investigative study you've done. I'm not sitting here no, fighting with you about the, with the you. fight that After we had last night. After you fucking got physically violent with me, I texted Travis. I said, come up here because I, I didn't want anything to happen. Me. I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just come and save me? No, go ahead. Continue. You, you, you... Travis to the rescue. No, that, no, that was the last one. You can go. Uh, you go. That was the last thing. So. Oh, yeah. You 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 called me a liar and yet yeah. Yet. I watched you lie. You called me a liar. I watched you lie. I You're, heard it. I was right there. There's no what. You still haven't told me what lie it is. We'll but yet every single fucking time. We'll you know you Chab. do this every single fucking we'll talk time. To Chab. I'm not fucking talking to nobody. No, fuck but, that. No, you fuck go fucking jerk. Go jerk him off. I don't care. I really could care less. It's you every single time. You latch on to some sort of thing. When I already told you, I don't know what you're fucking talking about. You don't even know what you're talking about. You still haven't even told me what it is. But run with it. You I have told you it. what it is. No, you haven't. I said to <laughs> Travis, I said, <laughs> no, I said to you, hey, <laughs> tell Travis what just happened. You oh, you told me to do it. You yeah. told me to. You said, go do that. I'm I said, no, tell, tell him what just happened. And I lied. And that you punched me in the You're fucking right. thing. And you, you figured in the face. Out. And you said, no, oh, fuck it. I didn't. What the fuck are you talking about? And I, I watched you, you lie. And then I, I didn't I punch you, and then by the way. You, I'm sorry that I didn't uh, 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 punch hit you. Me across the face in a proper slap, but I was hitting you. It was not punching you. Babe, you're not punched. Don't tell me what it feels like to be punched. You, you know, you, even a lot of times. You say we get into the semantics here. This is some more gaslighting. I didn't punch you. I just hit you, right? And it's just back and forth. And it's almost like she's sort of attacking his manhood by, it's almost like, oh my gosh, you're being such a baby. I didn't punch you. I hit you. So you've got sort of an, an attack on his character combined with some gaslighting. No, when you fucking have a closed fist. You get punched. You got hit. I'm sorry I hit you like this. But I did not punch you. I did not fucking deck you. I fucking was hitting you. you I don't know what you. the boat motion of my actual hand was. But you're fine. I did not hurt you. I did not punch you. I was hitting you. How are your toes? How, what am I supposed to do? Do this? How are your I, toes? I'm not sitting here bitching about it, am I? You are. All That's the difference between me toes. and you. You're a fucking baby. Because you start you physical are fights. You're a baby. Because you because you started physical fights? I did start a physical fight. Yeah, you did. So I had because, to get the fuck out of there. Yes, you did. So you did the right thing, the big thing. The, you know what? You're admirable. Every single time. What, 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 what's your excuse? When there's not a physical fight, then what's the excuse that you're still being admirable, right? Just by now, obviously, we don't know. You know, they're fighting about these fights, and we don't know what prompted the other fights. We kind of have some idea about what happened during the fights, but not what prompted them. And I will say this. And I've got videos, entire videos on this, that people with addictions 
will start a fight in order to be able to get really mad and feel justified and leave and go use. Now, we don't know that that's what's happening here, but I just want to put that out there that probably uh, if he wanted to leave and go use, he would know exactly what to say to provoke her in to being so angry that he could then justify the leaving. Like I said, we don't know that's happening, but it definitely happens when you're dealing with people with an addiction problem. You can say you're a, a call me names, but you get called a name and what do you do? That's the last insult. You're a baby. You're a hypocrite. You don't do anything that you actually do. You expect from people what you can't give them. If they do something, a taste of it to you, you fucking lose it. But yet you dish it out. What are you doing with this? I'm giving you a Xanax. In case you need it. Oh, thank you. Seems like it's warm. Yeah, it probably has. Not so that it can be transient things all around it. It's run away from me. I haven't even been able to have like a fight with you beyond in any real talking kind of speaking context in so long because anytime anything goes wrong you split like it's your first and it's unnecessary it's not always uh you're splitting because there's blows or because there's yelling or anything you split many most times when i'm still speaking in this volume and nothing has been thrown or hit or anything okay so that little clip you just heard might be the most shocking thing that I've heard so far. It's like when I was listening to this recording to begin with, you know, I'm listening to it. I'm kind of analyzing this fight. I can kind of see what's going on both sides back and forth. And then in the middle of this fight, you hear this pill bottle rattle and he's like, what are you doing with those? And she's like, Oh, I'm, I'm bringing you a Xanax because probably your, your Xanax is worn off. He's like, Oh, thank you. It's like you, you see all of a sudden this like kind nurturing type moment here where she goes and gets the pill bottle and feeds him a pill. Now that is pretty, I don't know, mind blowing to me in some ways, but in other ways, I feel like it's, it's almost like her way of trying. It's a desperation of trying to pull him in or bring him back. Cause you can see he kind of softened up when she did that. I'm just like, I'm going to give you this drug and we're going to be nice for, you know, about, 30 seconds here. Now, I think we're going to end there as far as the recording part. I feel almost guilty listening to this. Do you guys feel that way too? We actually listened to almost 30 minutes of the recording, but there's actually the whole recording is like two hours long. I will put the link in the description in case you want to check out the whole video, but I just wanted to listen to this with you because there's so many of the things that you're seeing right here, like real life examples of that we talk about on this channel is such a great um, illustration. You know, I feel a little bit guilty. It's almost like you're prying into someone's um, private life, but I don't know how these videos got leaked. My guess is one or the other of them leaked them to try to show their side of the story in this whole big messy divorce situation, but who knows? And ultimately I'm not taking one side over the other. This is a toxic relationship. And my guess is both sides here did a lot of toxic things to the other. Now, as I mentioned earlier, up next for you, I think the perfect video to follow this one up with is how to get yourself heard. There are better ways to go about this. There are healthier ways to communicate and stop these arguments that just go round and round and round and get nowhere.